it's not the most smooth of gearboxes. Back seat passengers should be quite happy. Okay, that 60 there is pretty quick, to be honest with you. That felt quick. Hello everyone and welcome to the Cargo YouTube channel. If you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell so you're notified any time I upload a new video. Today I am at the SMMT North event. First of all, I want to say a huge thanks to Sanyong UK for trusting me with their new Tivoli for letting me review it. Of course, at these events you can test drive all sorts of cars, but I still want to say I'm fairly new to this, so I do always appreciate any opportunities that I do get. So this is the Tivoli. Now you may think that looks quite familiar. Well, it has been around since 2015. So it's had a few little tweaks along the way, but it's still the same model, if that makes sense. So it's not a new shape, body shape. It's sort of a facelift from the 2015 model. And I've never tested that car properly. So I'm gonna go through this one today and see, does it keep up with modern standard SUVs? Now this is from the Korean manufacturer Sanyong and it's set to go against cars like MG, Kia and Seat in the more affordable small SUV segment. So today I'm going to test drive it, look around the inside and outside and see does it compare with other small SUVs out on the market and should you buy one. This ultimate model, it gives you sort of different elements. So you get the rear tinted windows, 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels, a few different exterior features. It looks and feels like it's absolutely gonna pelt it down. So just a quick few things about the car. This one's finished in platinum gray, which is a 550 pound option. I'll go inside now, I think. So I think it's best to shelter from the elements and step inside the Tivoli. What is it like? Well, honestly, it's pretty nice. It doesn't feel like the most up-to-date car, but from a more lower budget brand, we don't really expect that. So it's not a huge issue. It's more the interior quality and design that you'd expect from more budget brands like Suzuki and MG. So it's not blowing me away, but it's pretty nice. You have this lever up steering wheel on all models, which is excellent. This angle of the Tivoli, you can see a little bit better. You do have the heated seats on the Ultima and Ultima Nav. These say they're leather seats. I'm not sure if they are. In the Ventura model, they are part TPU and part cloth seats, but these sort of leather, it does smell like leather to be fair. I think it might be leather, but I'm not too sure. So I'd have to check on that. Very comfortable actually. So that's really good, of course. It doesn't look like there's any adjustable lumbar support, which is a bit of a shame as well, but they're pretty supportive seats. So I don't think you'll have an issue with them. You do have a manual handbrake. It's not surprising, but it would be nice if that was wrapped in leather. But again, it is quite a cheap vehicle. You've got the automatic gearbox. You can see it's quite clunky for an auto. It doesn't really need to be like that. This is the ultimate nav model. So it's the top of the range and of course, the, the clue is in the name that it's got nav through a micro SD card. I mean, to be honest, the interface feels a little bit out of date. It reminds me a bit of Toyota's sort of infotainment screens. Quite laggy, not the most intuitive. You've got fully digital dials. You can see here, you get this 10.25 digital dash here as well, which is rather nice. Oh, that was, that was quite cool, I like that sporty dials a bit scary actually so yeah that's quite nice that you've got that the center infotainment screen is eight inches on the ventura and nine inches on ultimate ultimate nav it has apple carplay as standard and dab radio as well so quite up to date with those features there i'll pop it into reverse you can see the rear camera as well very clear on this one actually and wide and in color so useful handy feature you've got front and rear sensors you can see on this one as well so really great you do have one usb so that's a little bit behind and no means of wireless charging whatsoever so that falls behind a lot of competitors without the wireless charging again though it's a cheaper vehicle so you kind of get what you pay for in some aspects overall not disimpressed with it i'm not mega impressed with it i think for its price point it does its job quite well and everything feels like not the best quality but it's like screwed together well, if that makes sense. So it is very much like Suzuki in that way, that everything is bolted together pretty well and everything's pretty solid, but it doesn't necessarily feel premium or plush to the touch. So let's take the Tivoli for a drive. Now, all the Tivolis are now the 1.5 turbocharged TGDI engines. 
And this one here today is the top of the range ultimate nav model with the automatic gearbox. So they don't actually have any hybrid technology currently in the Tivoli. So they're all just petrols. So I guess you could say that means it's a little bit behind. Let's take it round the roundabout. Oh, indicators sounds so funny. We love that. It's just falling over. <laughs> The gearbox is a little jerky at slow speeds. I will be able to put my foot down a bit and test it out as well, which is really good. So it does have a little bit of kick to it, this engine, because it's 163 PS or around 160 brake horsepower. Not to 60 time official on this auto model is 7.9 seconds. Put my foot down. Okay, that's 60 there. It's pretty quick, to be honest with you. That felt quick. Road noise is quite significant. So these are on the 18 inch alloy wheels. So the 16 inches on the base Ventura model may be a bit better. The ride isn't awful. It's a little jittery, but not bad. It's just very like, it's just quite noisy in here. There doesn't sound like much sound deadening at all. Excuse me. Volkswagen Group has better sound deadening and even I'd say the Fords feel a little bit more refined. You don't have paddles on the steering wheel, which is a shame because you do have them on the bigger Parando. You can also get a six speed manual in the Tivoli. There's no diesel or hybrids available currently, but they may come in the future, who knows? did make a little bit of a growl actually didn't it when I got up to speed then but it's not really like a CVT growl so it's not awful there's a lot of road noise of course I don't have the radio on or anything like that but it does sound a little a little loud safety wise the Tivoli had four stars in 2016 that rating has expired but of course it's had more tech added onto it however they've not retested it since it performed okay but that was obviously quite a while ago, but now it's got a lot more safety kit on. You don't have any blind spot monitoring on a top of the range car either. So tech is there, but it's not all there. Excuse me. Why does it sound so quick? Honestly though, I'm finding it okay to drive. Like it's quite smooth, the gearbox. Low speeds, not so much. I'm using the manual gears now but you've got to do that by pushing it on the side, not actually with paddles. Paddles always are great, but you can't have it all right. And I can pop it back into drive and it just coasts away. The lane assist, excuse me, it's a bit aggressive and it does beep at you. It sounds like a heart rate monitor actually. I would be interested to see how the manual drives because of course, with small SUVs, there's so many good manual choices. The Volkswagen Group are really good, and Ford with the Puma has got really good manual gearbox as well. So, something to bear in mind, but you'd have to test drive it for yourself. However, I think a lot of people will be looking at autos with this one. When it comes to boot space and practicality, the Tivoli is behind its competitors. The lip is absolutely massive. It's very high up actually. So the actual boot's high up. So it might be easier to put things in, but all the cases harder. You can see there is a place for a false floor. It's just not in this car. It's got 393 liters, which isn't really that great. Also, you have the tiniest load cover ever. <laughs> Normally these drag a little bit longer. They're on a bigger SUV, but this is like, it really didn't need to be a load cover, but okay. You've got the tire inflation kit, of course, like on most vehicles now. Not the most practical, most small SUVs are more. Look, it's very grim out there. What is a Tivoli like to shelter in? Back seat passengers should be quite happy. The Tivoli's got quite a boxy shape, so you've got loads of headroom, knee room, not a lot. Also these bungee back things, I wonder where they got that idea from definitely Renault let's be real yeah I don't really like the backs of the seats they feel very cheap with the bungee things not a huge fan you do have a rear armrest though which is lovely a lovely feature that not even the Volkswagen group can do on this size of small SUV so well done Sanyong 
you've embarrassed a few people with this armrest because it's very well done these small things matter they really do on honda it hits the base on volkswagen on the Tiger t-cross q2 on the audi and many more they don't have the rear armrest so it's got it which is great you do also have your two sets of isofix points in the rear as well don't have them in the front though so volkswagen group wins for isofix points in the front however rear seat practicality this Sanyong Tivoli is pretty good. You've got quite a high shoulder line, but not too bad. And it's nice and light in here thanks to the light headlining. So better than this Duke, 100% in the back of here as well. Backseat passengers, it is one of the best small SUVs I've sat in for a backseat passenger. Not the most amount of space for legs, but headroom and other than that is quite good. The seats are the comfiest. I'll sit in the middle seat, quite flat. You've got a little bit of a hump in the floor as well. So not the comfiest, but then you've got these soft touch padded sections, speakers. It's really not too bad. Bungee things, I don't like those. Some things do feel a little bit dated in the car. What would I think overall on the new Tivoli? Well, for a small SUV, it is good. Is it the best one? No, it's not but it is priced a little bit cheaper. This one, however, the top spec one is 25,000 pound. It does seem a little bit steep. However, on Motability, this car can be had for under 800 pound advance payment. So that might work out for you. If you need a brand new SUV, it might be one worth looking at. I haven't test driven the manual one, so I can't really comment on that. But overall, I've been impressed. It's quite nippy. The gearbox isn't the smoothest and it's not the most up-to-date car with technology but it's not really a bad offering compared to some of the other cars out there quite nippy but overall quite a nice vehicle if you enjoyed this video please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and i hope to see you in my next review